Number 33, plutonium-239, which is PU, right, with a mass number of 239, is a nuclear waste byproduct with a half-life of 24,000 years. That's crazy. What fraction of the plutonium-239 present today will be present in 1,000 years from now? Okay, so let's see. Now we're talking about a type of radioactive decay. I know that we're undergoing radioactive decay because they said that it was a nuclear waste, so a lot of, you know, unstable stuff there. But if they only gave you just one element and they're talking about it breaking down, it's going to be radioactive decay. So there's one huge thing about radioactive decay is that I don't care what isotope they're giving you. Plutonium, great. Uranium, great. Carbon, great. Any type of radioactive decay always abides by first order kinetics. Now, if we are in a traditional chemistry class, generally you will learn your kinetic formulas before you get here, which is your nuclear chemistry. So you already know two first order kinetic equations. And when you get to this chapter, usually they make you memorize different formulas for this chapter, but it doesn't have to be the case. You already know your first order kinetic equations. Use those. That's what I say. Why, why, you know, why, um, no more formulas than what you need to know. So we can use those first order equations to do this problem. So that's what I'm going to do. So anyway, let's get down to it, right? They're asking for what fraction of the plutonium is present today, will be present in a thousand years. So basically, if they're asking for a fraction, that's technically a type of quantity, right? Is half of the plutonium going to be, you know, present? Is three-fourths? Is a third? Is seven-eighths going to be present? That's a type of quantity. So if they're asking for a type of quantity or if they're asking for a certain amount, right, we're always going to go to this first order equation. We know we definitely have to use this one because these guys are our amounts, whether we're talking about percentages or fractions or actual molarities, but that's what these A's stand for. Now this one on this side, without the zero, this is your final amount. And the one that's the zero, that means that zero time has started, which means that you're literally in the beginning, you're initial. Now, they're asking for what fraction um, will be present in a thousand years. So we know that we are searching for the final amount. And we need to know it in a fraction form. So for right now, I'm just going to say x. But now, if we're dealing with a fraction, right, we need to know that initial fraction. And this one can be a little challenging, but let's think about it. Generally speaking, a fraction, right, is a number over another number. And usually, let's take, for example, three-fourths, right? If you had four total pieces of a pie, but there's only three-fourths, or there's only three slices left, you have three-fourths of the pie. Right? If you have eight total slices and you had three remaining, three out of the eight or three eighths, you know, is remaining of the pie. Welcome to, you know, beginning math. <laughs> so anyway, if we're talking about an initial amount and if you have eight slices of a pizza pie and you didn't touch the slices, there's eight total slices. And eight divided by eight is always one. It's technically not a fraction. The highest fraction is the number one, because whether you do seven out of seven, six out of six, five out of five, whatever out of whatever, it has to be the same number, you're always gonna simplify it down to one. So that's what this number is gonna be. Now we have the two values, x and one. Now we just have to find out the k and the t value. The k is the rate constant. Now, if I read this again, if I look over this again, they didn't say anything about a rate constant. So as of right now, I don't know it, but I should know it because I can't have two variables in the same formula. 
So that's why. Enter in the other first order kinetic equation, this guy, because this is the one that links the rate constant, the k value, with the k value. Now the t half over here is the half life, the time it takes to break that sample in half. And they did say that we had a half life of 24,000 years. That means that if you had eight slices of a pie, it's going to take you 24,000 years to eat four, half of it. <laughs> I'm going to eat it in 24 seconds. <laughs> oh, yeah, I love pizza, but I guess that's, that's probably where I'm from. Uh, we got good pizza over here. But anyway, let's keep going, right? So we know that this is going to be 24,000 years, and we can solve for the k value. So let's do it. 24,000 equals, let's put this, right, 0 0.693. It's a constant number for the first order half-life equation. And then we're just going to solve for k. We can do a little cross multiplication. We get 24,000 K equals 0 0.693. And then we're just going to divide by the 24,000. And we get a K value of 0.693 divided by 24000. Voila. Okay. 2.8875 times 10 to the negative fifth. And this would be years to the minus one because we used years. Okay. So this should be a lowercase k, but you know, my uppercase and my lowercase k's are very similar. So anyway, this is going to be that k value, 2.8875 times 10 to the negative fifth. Okay. And now the only thing that's left is this lowercase t. This is the general time. This is how much time is going to elapse. This is not the same as a half life because there would be a, a half here, but they're saying that we want to find out what that fraction is after a thousand years. So this is going to be a thousand. And just check the units in your K value need to match the units of your T. Years goes with years, so we don't have to do any conversions. So we're just going to plop it in. Let's go. LN. And I will just set the, the framework up first because I love colors. So I like to include the colors. So we have ln of x, and let's just move this over, equals the k value. Now this I'll probably need a little bit more room. So we have 2.8875 times 10 to the negative fifth. That's going to be in a thousand years. And the highest fraction is one. Now, if you have the TI-84 or TI-84 plus or an 89, you can plug this all into your calculator at once, which is what I'm going to do. But if you want to find the ln of one, multiply these two and then add them together, go for it. We should get the same answer at the end of the day. So ln of x equals negative this value times a thousand plus the ln of one. Okay, so negative 0 0.028875. We just want to solve for that x value, so we have to do the un, you know, undo the natural log, which is the e. So we're going to raise e to that value. This cancels out. And then we get x equals. Now this is probably going to give to us in a um, a decimal form, but let's see if we could change it to a fraction because that's what they wanted. So let's see. Is it a beautiful number? 
eh, 0.9, what am I doing? 0.9715, I guess. And now, since it's a, a fraction, or since this is a decimal, there's no uh, units here. Now, the thing is, I'm going to try to put it into a fraction, but technically, fraction and decimal form is basically the same thing. As we can see here, we started off with one, and we only, I mean, chipped away such a small amount. This is how much is remaining. So let's see. The, the, the way to do this is, it might, it might not work, but you go to math, and you press the one. Frac means that you're going to turn that value into a decimal. Uh, you're going to turn that frac that decimal into a fraction. So it's it says answer into a fraction. So it's going to analyze this and see if it could put it into a fraction for us. Let's see. And yeah, it doesn't come up because the decimal isn't matching with an exact fraction. Maybe if I do 0.97, and you know it, it's um we try to do it. It's probably going to do 97 out of 100. Let's see. Yeah. So this is the exact decimal that's matching the fraction, but if you need it, you know, into an an actual fraction, it would be 97 over 100%. Um, but I think that this decimal is, usually if they ask for fraction and you give a decimal, it's probably going to be marked correct. But if you need to, you could put the 97 over 100. That would be that would be um, rounding it a little bit, but it gets the job done. But that's it. I hope this helped. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Um, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thank you so much for your support. Tell your friends, tell your classmates about this cool channel. I think it's pretty cool. What do you think? And yeah, we got memberships open for the new school semester at the t at this, you know, the time of making this video. It's a brand new semester. It's the best time of year. Um, it's my favorite time of year. I just love that excitement of getting your schedules and seeing what you got. So that's fun. But yeah, um, if you want to be a member, you can. There's four different tiers. One might suit your fancy. Help us out a little bit more. Thank you. It's not obligated, though. But thank you for considering. And I'll talk to you soon, okay? Hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.